Then it's a dogfight. An F-14 against fifth gen fighters? Yeah, I think a racer will be that scenario. As soon as I see that, that the F-14 is going up against uh, fifth gen aircraft, I immediately think like, this is shit. There's no way an F-14 could go up against a, a fifth gen. My name is Alex Bowman, call sign Tinder, and I spent 11 years as a U.S. Navy fighter pilot flying F-A-18s operationally and as an instructor. I have over 1,800 hours in military aircraft. Today, I'll be reacting to Top Gun Maverick. All right, you put us here. How are you gonna get yourself out? All right, so here we see a uh, training mission, BFM, basic fighter maneuvers training mission between uh, Maverick and a Rooster. Kind of starts out where Maverick initiates the maneuver above a Rooster in an inverted fashion, reminiscent of the, uh, the original Top Gun. Greetings. So that's a little dramatic and it's very close. Obviously the only people applying that close are in like the Blue Angels flight demonstration team where they actually do this type of maneuver straight and level. It would be difficult in an operational F-18 to fly it straight and level inverted uh, in this scenario that close to another aircraft. From that perspective, it, uh, it is reminiscent of uh, the kind of training that we do. Uh, they find themselves in a two circle type spiral uh, down to the deck. What they kind of neglect here is the hard deck for training rules in a training scenario. Would we push it that low? Absolutely not. What they did do a great job of here is uh, what we call bitching Betty and it's the oral uh, warning to pull up, pull up. Altitude, 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 altitude. As soon as I heard that, uh, it brought me right back uh, flying the F-18, which is uh, which is cool that they were able to incorporate that prior to Rooster um, hitting the deck. Too late, you had your chance. That's a kill. They're low altitude, kind of going through a canyon there, and we see the uh, hit the brakes and fly right by. Traditional Maverick move. In the F-18, uh, I'm not sure that, uh, that that would actually work. It depends on the range and closure, how close the aircraft are. Again, if you have two Top Gun guys going after each other, they've got a lot of experience in the aircraft. So that's probably not a maneuver that's gonna be successful in the F-18 against uh, two experienced pilots. Yeah, Maverick smokes everyone. He's, he does have a lot of experience and uh, there is a there is a pretty big difference in the ability uh, based on who's flying the aircraft. Is it as big as this movie portrays it with Maverick being God's gift to naval aviation? Uh, it's, it's not quite that dramatic. However, if you have seasoned guys who have been the Top Gun and have been doing this a long time and kind of focus on BFM, they're gonna be really good at this type of, of flying. And and they are gonna have the advantage when, when we're kind of at a neutral neutral merge or neutral fight. However, with guys who've already been to Top Gun and they have a they have the patch, uh, they have equivalent training, maybe just not the same amount of flight time in the aircraft, I don't think you would see that much of a of a difference in um, in ability and skill set. We're in the briefing room, probably the nicest briefing room I've ever seen, especially with the display and uh, the graphics for the low altitude ingress. Historically, we do not have PlayStation 5 type graphics displaying the mission. You know, as technology progresses, we, as I was in the fleet, we were starting to get better graphics to basically replay our flight and, and see the flights real time with uh, tracking on aircrafts from uh, a basically a war room type scenario where you can see the terrain, you can see where all the aircraft are, albeit not to the clarity as, as this scene shows. Normally a briefing room is just gonna be set up with a whiteboard and and that whiteboard is gonna have a hand-drawn route on it and different timing wickets where we need to be to hit a certain time on target, as well as any major terrain or funneling features that we 
expect to see on our ingress to the target. And so pretty bare bones. Why is that? Because we have a lot of breathing spaces. We have whiteboards and uh, dry erase markers are cheap. And so we can basically brief anything with a dry erase board and, and markers. And so that's on aircraft carriers. That's in our briefing spaces and the hangars back home. And uh, that is the 99% solution. If you're on some sort of top secret mission and in this scenario, who knows, maybe you can get some PlayStation 5 graphics for your briefing setup, but I've never seen that. I'm abandoned on course to intercept. Blue team, what are you gonna do? He's 20 miles left, 10 o'clock, 700 knots closer. All right, so banded off course uh, to intercept. This is like, this happens all the time during training. And it's something that Top Gun instructors especially like to throw into the mix to test flight leadership and decision-making on an ingress to a target. Do you prosecute that bandit and potentially get off your timeline to uh, hit the target? Or do you press forward in this case and uh, try to hit the target and then deal with that bandit a little later? So they do a great job like bringing that scenario directly into Top Gun Maverick in the film here. And then all the comm calls that uh, I've noticed them using throughout this scene are correct and accurate. Target's in sight. Where's my laser, Bob? All right, so they uh, like to continue to the target. And then they do, in this case, a section pop attack, which are tactics that we train to. Low altitude ingress and you pop up to do the weapons delivery. Uh, they're doing a buddy lays type scenario where the lead aircraft drops the weapon and then the trail fighter is able to laze that weapon to impact. Uh, in this case, dead eye, which is an accurate term that we use whenever the uh, targeting pod is not working. Dead eye, dead eye. It's no good. Sorry, I can't get locked. Is used in this case. The lead pilot here uh, likes to go ahead and drop without any kind of laser designator uh, marking the target. In this case, that would be very poor employment and we would never train to dropping a laser guided bomb without terminal laser guidance uh, to the target. Coyote, come in. Coyote, come in. Coyote, level wings. All right, off target. Uh, it looks like we've got G-induced loss of consciousness. So Coyote pulls excessive uh, number of Gs. You start to lose vision, that peripheral vision. He blacks out. And honestly, this is probably the the most emotional part of the movie for me, kind of reflecting back on my time as F-18 pilot and seeing that kind of this play out. We've lost some great guys due to just this in training, G-induced loss of consciousness, where literally black out from loss of blood in the brain because that blood then pulls down to your lower extremities and uh, you lose consciousness and, and depending on how long um, how long you've been pulling G's or what the physiological state is who knows how long you'll be unconscious sometimes you snap out of it quickly and sometimes uh, you don't and in this case it's like Maverick goes after him to uh, get a missile lock to try to signal some different tones to go off in the cockpit to maybe maybe wake Coyote up and uh, and that works out that works in this case holy shit Baby, you with me? Right behind you. What I think is really cool here is, is the comm that they use is the actual comm that we use and, and TCC or tactical crew coordination between the uh, pilot and the uh, Wizzo in the backseat. Stand by. I've got it captured. Target acquired. Bombs away. <laughs> to get the laser on and the uh, target captured and then release on that. So I think that's cool to see. Throughout the movie, I think they do a great job of kind of showing the little details that the average audience wouldn't pick up on or recognize or really know what's going on. But in this scenario, prior to coming off target and pulling Gs to get over the mountain, the F-18 is limited to seven and a half Gs for the most part. So the, the computer in the F-18 will limit the aircraft to seven and a half Gs. However, we do have the capability to override that G limiter of seven and a half, and that's via the G limit paddle. And that paddle is directly below the throttle in the cockpit. So the pilot has the ability to override that seven and a half G limit, press that paddle and pull back to get more performance out of the aircraft. In this case, exceed seven and a half Gs, which they need to do to get over the mountain peak. So it's cool to see them incorporate that uh, in the cockpit. 
So off target, this is always the, especially in a dive type delivery or pop attack, this is the most vulnerable position that we find ourselves in. And uh, it's something that we train to coming off target to be ready for any kind of incoming surface to air threat. We're lower on airspeed because you just pulled a lot of G's to come off target and you kind of have that blue sky background. So coming off target and putting out countermeasures, whether that's chaff or flare, depending on what's guiding is something we train to. And then if you do see a surface air missile guiding, one of the first steps, uh, emergency jettison in this case, to get rid of any kind of extra ordnance or extra weight on the aircraft to make the aircraft more maneuverable. In fact, something that we train to, so they do a good job of capturing that in this movie while they're trying to defeat the surface air missiles. Everyone defending! They continue to defend. I think uh, I think they do a good job of capturing the chaotic nature uh, of this scene and, and what would actually be happening in the cockpit when you have smoke in the air, which is a legitimate call on the radio, and you see uh, incoming surface air missile and going through the uh, emergency procedures to evade or at least separate yourself far enough away from that explosion. Keeping an inventory of how much chaff and flare is on board, uh, the aircraft calculates that. We always wish we had more. Uh, in this case, Rooster runs out and, and Maverick kind of saves the day by uh, taking a missile for, for him. So, you know, I don't know how accurate that is, but, you know, it's in the realm of, of plausible or possible. You know, I don't know how how realistic the survivable nature of this type of mission would be. You know, they kind of acknowledge it in the movie as being not really great odds of surviving. It's kind of like a one-way mission where you're going in. And a lot of the training scenarios that uh, we are put through uh, prior to deployment, our scenario is very similar to this, where the kind of the odds are stacked against you. You have a lot of surface area threats that you're trying to avoid, and you have a lot of enemy aircraft that you're trying to fight through to get to a target that you're trying to strike in a, in a very difficult area. So the whole mission itself is something that we that we definitely train to with modern day surface area missiles. They're very difficult to evade and defend against. So with the number of surface area missiles, especially modern day surface area missiles in an F-18 in this scenario, I mean, it is. It would be very difficult to uh, to survive that and, and to come out of that um, alive. Then it's a dogfight. An F-14 against fifth gen fighters. It's not the plane. It's the pilot. Yeah, I think a rooster would be scenario. I mean, I would like to say, oh yeah, I could hop an F-14 and, and go fly it around it. And, and you know, to a certain extent, like you go faster if you push the throttles forward and you go slower if you pull them back and the houses get bigger when you push the stick forward and they get smaller when you pull the stick back. So from the perspective of just flying the aircraft, the stick and rudder mechanics would be similar. However, there is a complicated startup sequence, especially in an F-14 with circuit breakers and, you know, just getting that external huffer and they, they do a good job of showing that in the film uh, of like where to connect and how to turn it on and how to get airflow and the APU, the auxiliary power unit, and to start the main engines and, and all of that would just be very difficult. And as a brand new F-18 pilot, just getting in the F-18 simulator and trying to start it up on the first time, you know, I mean, it takes, I don't know how long it took me, maybe like 10 minutes to like find where all the buttons were and everything in a, in a logical order. And now, you know, it'll take 30 seconds, you know, so it's just, it could happen. Um, but I think Rooster would, would be screwed in that scenario. So it's a good thing he had Maverick. We took a hit, we took a hit, damn it! As soon as I see that, that the F-14 is going up against uh, fifth gen aircraft, I immediately think like, this is bullshit. There's no way an F-14 could go up against a, a fifth gen fighter, especially a fifth gen fighter that has the uh, offensive advantage being behind the F-14 from the start. In this case, the F-14 uh, down on the deck would be a difficult target if, uh, if that fifth gen fighter only has a gun and it is looking for a gun kill. In most cases, I would say if you're the offensive aircraft, probably just stay behind the F-14, not necessarily a need to go down in the canyon, but stay a little higher and keep sight uh, until you get a, a clear shot with a missile lock and uh, could end it, but that would make for a less interesting story. So we go down into the, we go down into the valley.
this movie, when I watched it, like I was very unexpectedly emotional just by seeing it, especially like after the fact, kind of reflecting on my time flying F-18s and the people I got to hang out with and the missions I got to go on and the deployments, and the travel and all that. And I think, you know, they do an awesome job. They do a fantastic job of kind of capturing naval aviation, modern day naval aviation in the F-18 and kind of giving a little bit of perspective on what the mission is, what we train to day in and day out and the capabilities of the platform to fight your way into hostile territory, drop a bomb on a priority target at a specific time and then egress and get out of there and fight your way back and, and do that all from a warship, an aircraft carrier in the middle of the ocean day or night. So, you know, kind of wrapping all of that into one movie and incorporating the action and just the training and the camaraderie and, you know, after after I saw the movie, I was like, damn, I should have stayed in the Navy, you know? Like, what am I doing? They, they show all the best parts, and uh, I think that's cool. And I think it's going to be great for Navy recruitment and, and the future of naval aviation uh, to kind of, you know, redo Top Gun and show the next generation, like, what's possible, you know, if you want to grow up and, and go fly fighter jets and, and do, like, badass cool things all over the world. Like, that opportunity is available, and uh, hopefully we'll recruit some good future fighter pilots. For more from Alex Bowman, make sure to check out our previous video where he reacts to the original Top Gun or our Expert Reacts playlist.